I remember when you told me that when you first started dating Aaron. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I knew he and, wrestled. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. shit about wrestling. So, like, you ever hear so, Kurt Angle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes, so I'm dating this girl, and I guess I guess her her uncle is like this big wrestler or something. <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? And I and I go, what's his name? He's like Kurt Angle. I go, you're dating Kurt Angle's niece. <laughs> Today we have a, a real American hero, uh, an Olympic champion, a gold medal winner, 1996 Olympics in wrestling, WWE champion of the world, and um, all around uh, incredible human being. And more importantly than all of that, he's, uh, he's my uncle-in-law, uh, Kurt Angle. I'm grateful that he's here. Uh, I love him with all my heart, and uh, I hope you guys dig the episode. The biggest undeniable in my life, with, 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 without a doubt, is, uh, is my wife, you know, is, is, is Aaron, you know, your niece. She's the woman of my dreams, and, and um, I respect her more than, more than anyone else. You got else a good one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. And, yeah. And, uh, and I will say that, you know, I think when you marry into someone's family, um, I can, you know, you hear people, there's like those, those age old adages about, you know, like the fucking in-laws or, you know, like the, <laughs> right, you know, right. her mom hates me or something, you know, but, but, uh, but you love them. Yeah. I lo you know, man, I'm just, you know, and, and, and I see so much, you know, the things that I love most about my wife, um, you know, her, her, her work ethic, her honesty, um, how tough she is. She was uh, a phenomenal athlete. Dude. Yeah. So t and then like, and she, when she was a, when she was young, she used to wrestle Mark, oh, right? Whoop his butt too. And, man. and you said, and, and Mark, I mean, Mark was, Marky was his first year. He was 28 and one. And, um, he, he won states almost every year and Aaron was kicking his butt <laughs> and they were the same weight class. Yeah, yeah, They're only yeah. one year apart. Uh, so Aaron would have done extremely well, but back then they didn't have girls wrestling. That's right. So. I mean, she, she and I used to wrestle all the time, and she would beat the shit. And she was dirty as fuck too. She would fish hook me. <laughs> I definitely want to get into like the the um, you know the way you grew up and how you grew up. Mm -hmm. But just tell me a little bit about uh, you know I, I you know I, n I never got to meet your old man, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I I got to know Grandma Jackie pretty well, yeah. and yeah, she, yeah like. Honestly, like one of my favorite people, <laughs> you know, my, what I mean, like everybody, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, like, I, just tell me a little bit about your your mom and your dad, and what what kind of people. Well, they my were. my mom and dad growing up, um, from the day I remember, uh, the one thing that surrounded our family was sport. We all had to be in sports. Didn't matter which sport you were in, uh, you had to, you had to have a sport uh, that you would excel at. And I wasn't good by any means. I was probably the worst athlete in the family and I used to cry a lot. So if I lost, I was, you know, uh, didn't take it very well. Hmm. And Eric used to, my older brother used to whip my ass quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, I was more of a cry baby, a sissy. I didn't, didn't like the one-on-one -on -one sports, like the team sport, because it wasn't all dependent on me. But that bothered me. It bothered me so much that I, um, I wanted to make it that I was comfortable with a one-on-one -on -one sport. I wanted to, I wanted to be like my brothers. Uh -huh. So my mother and dad, um, they never missed a sporting event that any of us did. Hmm. Traveled around the world, let alone you know not just locally, but my mother went to every one of my yep. wrestling events. Um, Do your we, dad play sports? Yeah, my dad played uh, football mm -hmm. in the army and. Mm -hmm. uh, he was pretty good. He was mm -hmm. a halfback, but um, you know, when 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 they had David, he David was, excelled extremely well in football and baseball mm -hmm. and basketball. Mm -hmm. And and then Mark came along. <laughs> he was the second in the family, and yeah. uh, he was a uh, he was different. Mark yeah. was um, he's the baddest dude I've ever known in my entire life. Uh, the toughest guy I've ever known in my entire life tougher than any other person I've ever met. And uh, <clears throat> he got in a lot of trouble growing up and he just had a, he had an anger problem. Yep. Uh, you know, it caused him to go to juvenile court. Uh, he, he went away, the juvenile delinquent center for two years. And that, that was for, for beating up them two cops. Yeah, right? <laughs> like he beat up he a couple a cops in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. You have to remember in eighth grade, he was, he was like 5'10", 185. <laughs> he was, he, he was a, 
he you know 12 13 years old yeah, but he yeah. was he was a, and when did he was you guys adult. know mark because you know like i remember for instance like the day I, I i proposed to aaron i don't know if you remember this but the day we were all at your uh, grandma i mean you're all at your mom's uh, apartment and uh, we were all hanging out and i was talking to you on the couch and those were still in the days you know, mark just so everybody knows that's my that's my my father-in-law yeah, that's it mark. and uh those were still in the days where i always kind of gave mark like a pretty wide berth you know like yeah, as yeah. everybody did because yeah. i just saw like around pittsburgh yeah i would see guys that i would be like just on site okay that's a that's a serious guy and yeah. they would give mark a real wide berth you yeah. know what i mean so yeah, i just kind of yeah. always gave and i remember i said to you man i i was there aaron wasn't even in town and i needed to go to mark to, to ask for his blessing <laughs> and i said to you you were you were wrestling you were you you know you, i didn't tell you, you to run well no i came to you and i was like kurt man and, and you're like what do you you kind of figured it out like what are you doing here with aaron not here and you and i didn't really know each other right, that well right, you know yeah. and i said like hey man i'm actually here because i'm gonna ask mark <laughs> if uh if it's okay that i yeah. marry aaron and you're like oh shit i'm staying here now man i'm not going anywhere and you're like good luck buddy he's like i gotta see this I went over to Mark, you know, mm -hmm. and he was uh he had baby Nico on his on his on, on his Loves lap. Kids, Loves kids. Loves kids. I mean this yeah, and I mean that's but I, I you know I remember I asked, I said, hey, hey Mark, you know, you think uh you think I could talk to you for a minute in the in the um in the hallway? And he's like, huh? I'm like, <laughs> you think I could talk to you? And 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 like I, I asked him like three times. I don't know if he like couldn't really hear. I mean, I, I think that that was as scared as I had ever been. <laughs> and like, you know, I remember the first time I came to Pittsburgh, mm. guys were coming up to me saying to me, Have you met have you met her dad yet? Yeah. And I said, no, that's why I'm here. I'm going to meet him. And they'd say, oh, I think he might be the toughest guy in the country. Yeah. And you know, when you <laughs> hear things like that, you're like, come Stories, on. Stories, man. You, yeah. I mean, everyone had, so like, what, like, when did you know, when did everybody know that Mark Angle was a different, was okay. a different breed? When he was in high school, after he got out of juvenile court, um, I think he was a junior in high school. He, the wrestling coach asked him, we need we need you keep stay out of trouble mm -hmm. and we're gonna put you in wrestling because this is where you can take your aggression out on other people and mark did it and the first year he wrestled he went to state in, in pennsylvania yeah and that that's, doesn't happen yeah that's, yeah that's impossible yeah and um and while that was occurring mark garnered the reputation around pittsburgh um that he would take on all fighters so the, they would have these fights every couple weeks where these people from Pittsburgh, different high schools, would come to Mark and say, I heard about you, I want to fight you. And, you know, everybody talks about this like, like it happened all the time back then. It didn't. This is, this, you know, everybody wants to say their brother's the toughest guy yeah, yeah, and he yeah, used yeah, to yeah. beat people yeah, up and yeah. guys used to come and want to fight him. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, this is yeah. what happened. Yeah. And Mark never lost. He never lost a fight. But, you know, he kept getting in trouble. And uh, so, long story short, his senior year, he did extremely well. And all these colleges wanted him. Yeah. And uh, they knew he only wrestled two years. And they were, like, licking their chops. We got to get our hands on this guy. So his grades weren't good enough to go to college. But he went to junior college. And his first year there, he already had a kid. And uh, he was married to Cindy, and yep. uh, he was there. He did extremely well at the Nationals that year. He made it to the semis. He, he got injured, so he had to back out. Uh, but he probably would have won the Junior College Nationals. And uh, Arizona State was ready to give him a scholarship the next year. And to but play he, football too, right? No, he wasn't going to play football. No, he, oh, he wasn't going to no. play football? But he was. He was He was really good at football. Yeah. He also tried out for the Philadelphia Eagles, oh, by did the he? way. Yeah, back in the 70s. Uh, but Mark, um, he just did, uh, he excelled in wrestling and, uh, and you know, he, winning all these fights. And then he goes to college. He ends up getting his wife pregnant again. He has to work now. Yeah. He can't go to college anymore. Back then, you couldn't. There's no way you're gonna have a wife and two kids and go to school. Yeah. And work and wrestle. Yeah. It's just yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. Mark had to give it up. Yeah. And when he did that, his efforts went to who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny and Eric and Kurt. Yeah. So now we're under the Mark, you know, yeah. umbrella. Yeah. And we're doing what he wanted to do. And so, what's that like? It was tough. It was tough. <laughs> I, uh, I will tell you this. Um, 
his son was the best wrestler in our family by far. Um, but Mark started him way too early, mm -hmm. four years old. By the time he graduated college, he didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Being Mark Angle's little brother was, was not easy, but it, it also, there was a lot of bonuses to yeah, what, it. What mean, were the bonuses? <laughs> knowing how to win, knowing yeah. how to train, having someone that knows what he's doing, yeah. you know, oversee you the whole time, you yeah. know? I, it was tough because, you know, I couldn't be a kid. I, I would be literally sleeping Saturday morning and he would call and say, uh, put Kurt on the phone. He called my mom. I'm like, what do you want? He's like, you're going to a tournament today. And I said, I'm not going to a tournament. <laughs> he said, yes, you are. You're coming yeah. with me right now. Yeah. And I'd have to go. And it yeah. was like, I don't want to do this, yeah. you know? But what he did for me, I can never forget. Um, the thing is, I I took it the right way. And I used what he did for me. And I, I motivated myself to become better. Didn't you tell me that, that, that you at first did not make the Olympic team? Yeah, I, I didn't make the Olympic team in 92. I was an alternate and I continued to be an alternate for the world team because when you don't have the Olympics in 92, 96, 2000, 2004, the years in between you have the world championships. So 92 is the Olympics, 93 is the Worlds, 94 is the Worlds, 95 is the Worlds, then 96 is the Olympics again. So you have a world championship every year, yeah. including the Olympics. They're all world championships. So um, I was... I was runner up three years in a row. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to make the team. I can't beat this guy. And there, there are two guys that I was having problems with winning. So I quit. And uh, I, I, it, it really, um, really bothered me that I gave it up before I even, and, and that's why, you know, I don't want to tell my nephew, Marky, you know, why'd you quit? Cause I understood why he quit. But why do you why do you quit? Like what is what what's the voice in your head that tells you to quit at that point? That, that tells you just can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. What, what's the reason? What, what's the purpose of moving on if you're going to be second? And I had to learn the hard way that second is not that bad. Mm -hmm. So at least if I go back and I I try to make the team and I take second, at least I can say I did it. I I, I quit two years before the Olympics and I wasn't going to go back. And for those six months, it bothered the hell out of me. I just kept thinking, I'm going to regret this. I at least got to see it through. So I, I went back a lot more motivated. And I, the next two years, I, I, I can't believe this myself because I won the worlds in 95. I made the world team, won the worlds, made the Olympic team, won the Olympics. Those two years that I was going to give up, were the two biggest years of my so life. What, and, and do you think that there's something specific that happened inside of you? Though, it, did you did you take some pressure off of yourself? Was it a, was it a different mindset? Was it a, what was different about those two years? Well, you know, I, I always it was always in the back of my head. What if I would have what if I would have tried football? Because uh, I was an extremely great football player in high school, and uh, I was an all state fullback linebacker and. I thought, uh, you know, the Steelers came to me with interest in 1994. Bill Cowher met with me, and I try out for the Steelers. And I think that's what what broke the camel's back. I trained for it, got ready for it, didn't make it. And what, you, the, you, the reason I didn't make it. combine or what? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah, it was try? more of a combine. Yeah, I, um, uh, the reason I didn't make it is um i just wasn't fast enough i ran a four seven in that trial yeah yeah yeah. It's i like was right running cut, four yeah. sixes but um you know that i had a not a great run but i was i was doing the patterns uh pass patterns catching the ball very well but knowing that i tried that and i did make it i think that's what brought me back to wrestling what's the state of pittsburgh these days well I, I love pittsburgh i love my hometown and you know that's where my family is that's where most of my family and my wife's family is but yeah. um we we want to move we want to either move out to california or in, to florida just to get in the warm weather yes yeah. uh, you know i'm 51 years old i've been, <laughs> been wrestling my whole life yeah. and my body you know yeah uh, the winters can be a little yeah. bit rough, yeah. so yeah. I'd prefer to be somewhere a little warmer. Do you feel like the city's yeah. changed, or do you feel, is one of the things you love about it that it stays the same? Like what? what I, I, I think a lot of it stays the same. Uh -huh. I think it's very traditional. 
Um, they've been doing better economy wise, but you know, overall it's Pittsburgh's Pittsburgh, you know, it's, it's whatever, whatever impression you have living outside of Pittsburgh of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. you're probably right. <laughs> so, you know, the people are crazy. Yeah. They're very loyal. Yeah. You know, they got that Pittsburgh accent yes, and you know, it just, they're very unique mm -hmm. and, uh, and they like that. They yeah. like being different. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, if you live in Pittsburgh, it's different than the rest of the other state of Pennsylvania. So Absolutely. it's, you know, it's, it's different, but you know, it's, it's a steel city. That's yep. how we grew up. It yep. was a sports town. And I grew up in that reputation of uh, being proud of being from Pittsburgh. Yep. And, and that's probably why I took so much, uh, uh, put so much effort in the sport. Yep. It's because everybody there, you know, sports were so important, especially in my family. Yeah. I mean, like, I think from the first times going back there and, you know, going to, I think I went to a um, Ken McMillan match once. Yeah, and I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, can you describe just sort of like what wrestling culture is in that part of the country? I'd never seen anything like the fervor that, that, that there is for wrestling in that, in that, in that community. Pennsylvania is different. Um, they were always known very well for the sport of wrestling and i think um you know now that they're the number one state in the country if not the whole entire world uh in wrestling it has a lot to do with the structure of pennsylvania you have to remember pennsylvania means penn's woods mm -hmm. and there's two cities at the end and the rest is just That's woods right. so That's right. you know these people um you know not a lot of money you know not not wealthy people more blue collared, um, hardworking people. And, um, you know, with that, you know, if, if you're a family that's, you know, a middle-class family, you're not, you're not going to be able to buy football equipment or, or hockey equipment. You're going to get, you're going to do the cheapest sports wrestling. All you need is a pair of wrestling shoes. That's right. It's, you know, it's, it's relatively cheap. Same thing with basketball, going out and playing, you know. It, uh, but Pennsylvania garnered the uh, respect of the whole entire nation because year in, year out, they produce all Americans yeah. in college. That It's just like the numbers are ridiculous. Yeah. I think one year when I was in college, uh, the 120 all Americans, 72 of them were from Pennsylvania. Holy shit. And yeah. the whole country. Yeah. So it, it just shows the quality of wrestling in the state of Pennsylvania. How important is work ethic in wrestling? Can, is, is it more or less important uh, than talent? I, I think so. I think, uh, you know, wrestling is a sport where you have to kind of figure yourself out. Um, if you're not a great athlete, you got to figure out a way of how you're going to win. Uh, you know, th there are some wrestlers that are phenomenal athletes. They got great double legs, single legs. They attack extremely well. There are a lot of wrestlers that are very defensive. And they're the ones that usually are the least um, gifted athletes. So they they go on defense and they they react to your offense yeah. and, and, but <clears throat> I think the whole thing is figuring yourself out what your style is going to be. Are you going to be aggressive? Are you going to be passive? Uh, are you going to be a funk wrestler or are you going to be a technical wrestler? What do you mean by funk wrestler? Funk is, you know, these guys that do backflips when you have his leg and he flips over and does a flip and ends up grabbing your leg and yeah, yeah. Just, just crazy stunts that yeah. you end up on top. Yeah, yeah. You, a lot of times you'll see wrestlers do stuff like that. Yeah, and um, it's trick wrestling. Yeah, and uh, it works. Yeah. You know, but I don't want to say it works a lot, but it it can work if you figure out how you can do it to your opponent. And I know this, you you're not going to be a great wrestler unless you put in the time. Yep. And I think that's with anything. When I first met Aaron and, and I first was going to Pittsburgh, you know, look, man, I was like a, a, a theater student, you know what I mean? And I had to tell Mark, and she's like, what is he, he's an actor. He's like, hey, what's up, Sean Kerrigan? Hey, come over here, How man. How you doing, come Sean? Say, what's up, man? Fuck, I didn't even know you were here, dude. 
Motherfucking yeah, I just crazy, watched man. the Brett Favre video. Yeah, dude. I was like, totally. Yeah, dude. Hey, man. It's a pleasure. Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Hey, man. Sean, as I told you, hey, sit yeah. down, dude. This, sit is, down this, this is a perfect. Look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Hey, yeah. what's up? Because I met Sean. Right, I met cool. Sean right right when I met, uh, like, yeah. Sean and me started hanging out right when Aaron and I met. Okay. Sean, you know, like I told you, he's a pro <laughs> fighter, <laughs> wrestled in college. Hey, get down, dude. Get down. Um, But I just remember going to Pittsburgh and everybody you know knows who you are and you're mm. you're uh, a god there and 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 uh i mean everyone knows who you are everywhere but i mean like in pittsburgh but there was also just something about the angle family i mean a lot of I'm people I'm not the most popular angle in pittsburgh mark yeah, is mark is <laughs> yeah man people call me mark yeah 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 hey yeah. you're mark angle right now <laughs> that's my brother yeah i mean they were all not yeah. talking i mean honestly they weren't talking about you they were talking about mark, mark. Yep, yep. and and like what is that i mean so you're the young you're you're the youngest of five brothers yeah. Like what it and and like I I remember even at your wedding man like I was at his wedding and there was like at one point like all the brothers were like up on stage together and it's like dude they're like I mean they're just fucking monster you know like <laughs> yeah, it's just like all... monster like what is that yeah. like like what is they're that all like badasses, man? yeah man. yeah I it it was rough I mean you know it, in order to be an angle you had to you know have that reputation and. You know, I, I even at one point I wasn't I wasn't much of a fighter, but you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was getting fights all the time because I thought I was supposed to. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got this yeah. identity that yeah. you're Mark Engel's little brother and yeah. you're a tough dude. Yeah. Until the day I got my ass kicked by this guy to twice my size. <laughs> I was like, Okay, man, no no more of this. Yeah. Maybe maybe my my goal is to be a good athlete, not a good fighter. So yeah. Yeah. but yeah, growing up around Mark and you know, the, people expected you. Eric, Eric was another. Oh, he was, he was another fighter that uh, uh, I don't think he ever lost a fight either. Yeah, he, he was uh, he angry issues, but you know, he he was uh, just as almost as tough as Mark. Pretty yeah. close. I yeah. wouldn't say nobody's Mark's level, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I can't even explain it anybody about sense. Mark. Yeah, yeah, it's, but, it's yeah. funny because you you yeah. know when you talk about. You know, like like uh, you know, Sean Sean knows knows Mark real well okay. as as well. And, and I remember when you told me that when you first started dating Aaron. Yeah, yeah. And because I knew he wrestled, yeah, I didn't know yeah. shit about it. I'm so, like, you ever hear of Kurt Angle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He goes, he goes. So I'm dating this girl, and I guess I guess her her uncle is like this big wrestler or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of him? And I and I go, what's his name? He's like Kurt Angle. I go, you're dating Kurt Angle's niece. <laughs> I was like, man, you better, you better keep your things tight, Mind your man. P's and Q's, Mind your P's and yeah. Q's, man. Yeah. That's a tough yeah. family right there, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Has wrestling culture in Pennsylvania changed because of UFC? Are more kids getting into MMA or more? It I, I wouldn't say more kids, but um, uh, I think that uh, uh, you're gonna see, you're gonna see even more wrestlers go into U MMA, UFC. You, you know. Yeah. You, yeah, it's it's such a great sport to parlay into MMA. Yeah. Uh, it's a great base to have, and you know, I I, I know that uh, this gives these kids hope of a professional future that yep. they could have yep. that boxers only had. Yep. Uh, you know, wrestling is uh, not a revenue sport, right. so you know it's uh, pretty cool that now they have the choice of. UFC, Bellator, even WWE, which is not wrestling, but you know, it's sports entertainment, but it, it gives these guys somewhere else to go after college. Yep. And it gives them hope of, you know, I could be a UFC champion someday, or I could fight in the UFC and, yeah. you know, after college. So uh, we didn't have that back then. Yeah. And the Olympics were our pros and that was it. Yeah. yeah that so, guys used to talk about that. And yeah, saying, you yeah. know, there's where, no sport. Where do you go yeah, with there's this? no sport for us after college, and and then UFC. They tried a along, pro you know? league and wrestling; it didn't work. Right. And, right. Uh, just uh, why do you think that that doesn't work? Because I mean, you watch it, the NCAA; it's great. Yeah. I mean, it's an yeah, NCAA. they they get a good turnout. I don't know. Uh, I just don't think it's uh, considered a mainstream sport in America. Yeah. Uh, worldwide, it's competitive as hell. Yeah. Uh, so it's. We the crazy thing is as as um, unmainstream as it is here. Don't get me wrong. Every you know, almost every high school and college you know have some form of wrestling program. But yeah. um, it's just uh, there's not 
you know, it's never been considered a, an, an American sport, you know, it's. And, and, and so with that, when you, you know, you, you, you reach like the pinnacle of all mm -hmm. pinnacles and then how, uh, how, how did, how did your brothers, how did the family respond to the, the, the choice to go to the WWE? Crazy thing. Oh, WWE. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they weren't, they weren't that happy at first, but you know, growing up, um, I never watched WWE. Yeah. Um, uh, I knew before I signed in 1998, I knew who Hulk Hogan was macho man because he had a Slim Jim commercial. Right. I literally didn't watch wrestling right. at all. Right. The only wrestler I really knew was Bruno Sammartino because he's from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And um, I was always told, don't watch that crap. That's fake. You're real. My coaches would tell me that. My brothers would tell me that. So I never watched. Right. And, uh, um, you know, when I decided to go into it, they're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Do this. How'd that come about? <laughs> well, Vince McMahon called me and said, we'd like to offer you a contract and, you know, uh, would you like to come up and we'll talk? So that, that's how it started. And, and like, was it always to be, was it always to be Kurt Angle, the Olympic hit? Like, did you guys come up with? I think so. I think Vince had a, an idea in his uh -huh. head that, uh, he, um, he tried this with the rock, uh, when he started and uh, it backfired on him. So he wanted, he knew it would backfire on me, but uh, I thought he was wrong. I didn't think I was going to be a bad guy. Yeah. How does that Olympic gold that medalist, yeah. you know, um, people but, are going to love this guy. He's yeah, a hero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they, they even had me talking about, you know, positive things, intensity, integrity, intelligence, and uh, you know, using the three eyes and doing your best. Yeah. And it worked yeah. because people were like, who is this guy? What the <laughs> hell is he talking about? Like, I want to throw up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he made me annoying as fuck, yeah. and it worked extremely yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, I get fans today that say, oh, I hated your guts I, yeah. back then. But you know what? I, I appreciate it now because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know you were actually you know, acting. You yeah. were being yeah. an asshole. Yeah. But um, it, it was it was. I heard you like cool. the first time you, you, you went to – Pittsburgh people were like booing you and shit. Yeah, I mean, well, Vince said, "Listen, you're going to be a heel tonight." I said, "This is my first night on the air, and I'm in Pittsburgh." I yeah. said, "They're going to love me." Yeah, watch. he said, "No, you watch. Just yeah. say this and watch what happens." Yeah, and they did. They shit on me, man. Yeah. It was. Yeah, Vince yeah. was right. It, yeah. it worked. It, the, the WWE audience, uh, you have to earn your keep in order to be a big star there. You, yeah, you don't just come in, even if you're though they don't look at you and say, Oh my god, Olympic gold mouse is coming in. I'm so excited, like they would in an NFL draft. Yeah, it's more like, Who's this guy? Why do you think that is? And uh, Kurt, come on in and dazzle us. Yeah, we're not going to be impressed unless you impress us. Yeah, so they're they they have very high expectations. Yeah. And you have to meet those those expectations, whether you want to be a bad guy or a good guy. Yeah, are and there? They're very hard on their on the wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. Are there politics? They're going. Oh yeah, together? there's a lot of politics. Uh, I think it's politics and everything. So, um, that's one thing I didn't like about wrestling. You know, there there were, you know, the things you have to do and things you're not supposed to do, and you know you have to follow that guideline and. It's unwritten rules, but sure. I think I think it's in everything. When you were wrestling in college, what did what did like Kurt? Oh mean man! You? Like what what, what was? I what mean, was... I watched you win the Olympics in '96, mm -hmm. and John told and, me, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and I met you not too long after yep, that, yep. and then, um, and so I mean, it was a huge inspiration, mm -hmm. you know. It's uh, it was right before my senior year, George Mason. And uh, I remember watching you win, man. I was just, God. You guys had a good program, man. Yeah, yeah, we were pretty good. Uh, Johnny Curtis came out of there. He used to wrestle yeah, up at Fox Catcher. Yeah, I trained Johnny quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. man. And he, he used to come back and tell stories of those Fox Catcher days yeah. about John DuPont and all that stuff. Yeah, and we, we heard stories about, I mean, not to bring that up, man, yeah. but it's. Well, you, you, know. you, you were there for a bit and you left, right? Yeah, well, I, 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 I would come and go. I, I, was a, I was a regular. I would be there about five to six months a year, and then I would train somewhere else, travel around the world. And... But you were younger, yeah? You were there. Yeah, right? yeah. I was, I was there, geez. Um, I'd say from 89 to 96, seven uh -huh. years, yeah. And that was a huge honor to get invited there, right? Oh, it like was the, the best club in the whole entire world. Yeah. Yeah, we had everything. And how and, weird was that fucking guy? I, it, you know, it's, 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 it's such a tough thing because you, you, you want to say 
he he did so much for the sport of wrestling and if he didn't come in when he did uh we wouldn't have ended up being number one in the world we had the best team in the world it was the first time ever 96 is the first olympic team that we actually as a team over yeah. one won the overall points and how many of those guys were fox catcher guys gosh a lot of them uh, right? yeah. yeah kevin jackson the brands brothers uh me uh geez uh there, there were a bunch of them and um uh it's just uh you know john john was doing some crazy stuff i know he was doing drugs and you know he he did some <laughs> one time i was in his house and he came in and uh, you know, he said, you guys want some pizza? I said, yeah, yeah, well, we're hanging out. We're in his mansion watching TV in his trophy room. And he leaves the room for about 10 minutes, comes back, and he's got white stuff on his <laughs> nose, and he's doing this. He's like, you guys have to leave. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> so I go, I go to leave, and there's a guy named Robbie Calabrese. He's with me. He said, no, you stay here. And John pulls out a gun and says, uh, somebody's trying to get me. I found these uh, tunnels in the basement. He had the World War II or the Civil War, the DuPonts, they had these caves, the yeah. escape routes, you yeah. know? So he, he made Rob go in there. They're only four feet high and he made him go in and walk. And John DuPont went in behind him. He had the gun loaded <laughs> and he had it pointed at him. It was 600 yards <laughs> down the tunnel. He had a gun, loaded gun pointed at his ass. He could, could have died that day. Wow. But John did this crazy stuff all the time. He drove his car into a lake twice, pretending that mm -hmm. he was a, a Balkan Airlines pilot, Bulgarian Airlines. He was obsessed with Bulgaria. Huh. Uh, the guy he gave his, his fortune to yeah. was Valentin Jordanov, Bulgarian mm -hmm. Olympic gold medalist. Wow. Gave all his money, $450 million to, wow. to yeah. Jordanov. Um, he was just obsessed with Bulgaria and, uh, he, he did some crazy shit, but, uh, nobody thought he was going to kill anyone. Yeah, I think everybody just pretty much like everybody just kind of like where wrote him off as like, ah, it's just John being John. Like, he but would fire his gun the in the end, air and stuff like end, that. Right. Near the end, we're all guilty of let's keep this quiet until the Olympics. And then everybody jumps shit. Because so, what he's offering you guys is what he's offering money, you. Money, yeah. uh, facility, travel, uh, the best training in the world, bringing the best coaches in. Uh, we had everything, doctors, trainers. We, we, had a, we had a computer that would teach you how to beat your opponent. Wow. We had so much stuff there. It was an incredible facility. It was right on his farm on the, where the mansion was. And uh, he had like 25 houses on the farm. So we all lived in houses. Wow. There was not a better facility. Yeah. So he, he had the best club in the world and we wouldn't have been the best in the world if it weren't for him. And it sucks because he took away my, my the one wrestler that taught me more than anything, Dave Schultz. Mm -hmm. He was my coach and uh, he took him away from me six months before the Olympics. But Dave taught me enough that I knew what to do from there on. You know, I knew how to, take care of myself and get myself ready. But, um, you know, we're, we're all a little bit guilty of knowing that John was maybe capable of doing something mm. like that. And we all just wanted to keep it sh our lips shut till even Dave Schultz said that he said, when, when after the Olympics were gone yeah. and, uh, it did, it was just happening. There's just six something, there was just something not right. Something not right. Yeah. And we, it was time to go. Yeah. And unfortunately John killed him six months before the Olympics. So, it was really sad. Did you think that? Did you think that the movie did a good job? Like, did did, did that scene? Yeah, right? yeah. I, I didn't like the way uh, John's mom wasn't alive. Hmm. He waited for his mom to pass away before he started the club because oh, she wouldn't right? approve of it. It was too much of a barbaric sport for her son to be involved. Right. So John waited till she passed away. Then. Right. But other than that, the movie was. The actors did incredible. Right. Yeah. What's the biggest misconception, would you say, uh, uh, of, of pro wrestling? Well, I think if you want to get into pro wrestling, you have to have a great imagination. I think that you, as a kid, you, you had to pretend that you were, you know, I, I used to, when I was younger, I used to, this is crazy, but 
I would pretend that Russia was spying on me because I was such a superior athlete and they were watching me play basketball and watch me play football. And I, like, I had this imagination yeah. Yeah. of, you know, that I was this incredible athlete that yeah. everybody in the world was, you know, searching for. Yeah. Wayne, you know, I was the next big thing, yeah. you know? So um, having the imagination and being a great athlete and intertwining those mm -hmm. can really help you in, in the WWE and sports entertainment. You, you also wanna, have to have some acting skills too. Right? Yeah, you. I mean, you. It, it comes. You know, you, it comes with experience. You're gonna. They, they didn't teach me how to uh, do that stuff. They they just said, "Hey, you're. You know, we don't have. They didn't have a program back then for it. They had this dojo where they, Dory Funk Dojo, where they taught you how to wrestle." And they did a little bit on promos, but it wasn't it wasn't a lot. Now they have a NXT, which is a training facility. They do promos, they teach you acting skills, they teach you wrestling, everything. Back then they didn't have it. So when I started, Vince said, sink or swim, uh, here's your promo. He actually, the first night he read it to me, he said, you're gonna say it. And I said, Vince, I didn't hear a word you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little nervous right now. He goes, I'm gonna tell you one more time. If you don't say it, you sink. So he told me one more time and he said, now go out and do it. And I did it. And that's when he said, I have somebody that, somebody special. That what, and what did with. you find in me, the, the bad, like the performance aspect of it? Did that bring you towards it or did it push it? Like, how, how, I loved it. it. Yeah. I, I loved the. Cause you're fucking great at it, right? And yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was, I didn't think I'd pick up that quickly. I, I, you know, from when I started the first day I wrestled or I learned Taking bumps, I guess. Uh, two days later, I had my first match. That's impossible. That you know, that was. I was very. I picked up very quickly on the technique, but I. They started me on TV literally seven months later. They, you usually have to be about three to five years in before you start on TV. Uh, seven months in, and I won the world title. Yeah, ten, didn't ten months after that. You beat the is Rock. It, yeah, isn't this the yeah. twenty year anniversary of you? Yeah, beating the Rock? yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. the thing is, I I didn't know what I was doing, but Dwayne the Rock uh, called the whole match in there. He just told me where to go, what to do. Whispering to you. So here I am. I'm wow. going to be the champion of WWE, and I don't even know how to work. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So, yeah. Right. Um, but Vince, I wasn't screwing up. I was getting better and better and better. The more I performed the more better I got the more promos I did the better I got and by the time I won the world title there was no looking back yeah and, uh, yeah and then be, being a great follower made me a great leader and I learned how to work myself and improvise and uh, before I knew it my next uh, opponent was Stone Cold Steve Austin I beat him for the title yeah so the two biggest you know two most popular sport superstars in yeah. history were yeah. my first two titles wow and uh, it, I, it was a blessing because they taught me so much yeah. that I became a great worker after that. And I started leading the yeah. matches. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the state of, of sort of the fans? Has it changed? Because I, I remember as a kid, I used to go all the time. And I remember, you know, like my old man used to take me and, and Dougie when we were kids. And I mean, like... the. I mean that it was like vulgar back then, man. Yeah, I mean, people yeah. were like throwing <laughs> bottles into Raunchy the ring. Vulgar, it was, yeah. I mean, the things that people were saying. I remember being like, you know, first time, like being really scared, yeah. like you know what I mean, uh, of of the audience, stuff. right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I'd gone to see you a, 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 a few times, mm. and you know, man, I was actually really surprised with how yeah. civil it's. It's they, much. They different. had to change it, and the, the, a lot of it had to do with um, WWE becoming a publicly traded company. Um, uh, once they did that, the, the, the shareholders decided, well, how do we make the most money? Kids. How do we get kids there? Mm -hmm. Parents. Mm. How do we get the parents there? Market to the kids. Yeah. So yeah. everything, merchandise, uh, everything they do, um, everything's PG rated now, yeah. Yeah. if not even G rated. Yeah. You can't swear. You can't, you can't say anything, uh, that isn't approved. So they, they, they're making more money now, and I'm not gonna say they have a bigger fan base. Yeah, they do worldwide, but in the United States, the Attitude Era was pretty much yeah, you know, the the main era where we were selling out every single night. Do you think um, it would have been easier for you to play a heel or 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 like a like a good guy? 
Well, I think uh, starting out, uh, the, the problem with wrestling is, pro wrestling, is in order to be a baby face, uh, be a big baby face, you, you have to be a heel first. The fans won't accept you until you go through the process. The pro- yeah, yeah. Earning your keep before you go. So yeah. whether you like it or not, you have to do it. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I like people pissing yeah. people off. I yeah. thought it was fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and you know, I you know, every once in a while I get something thrown at me, or you know, you know, it was back then it was still a little rough. Yeah, but I it, it was cool. I mean, I, I just really enjoyed uh, pissing off the fans and and having that reaction because I knew that the more popular I became as a heel, the more popular I would be as an overall wrestler. So Roddy Piper didn't become the biggest babyface in wrestling. Good guy. Uh, because, you know, he just showed up. He mm. did it because he earned it. Mm. He All those years he was heel, these fans, you know, not, not only did they shit on him, but they were like, this guy, this guy's entertainment. He's entertaining. He's really funny. There's something about making people hate you. I, I mean, I, I remember when I did Shane on The Walking Dead, yeah. you know, like I had never had any exper- experience like that. I remember we went to like, you know, New York Comic Con and the show hadn't even come out yet. And you know, like Andrew Lincoln, that was a good heel part, by the way. It was, it was so much fun, man. And and I, but I didn't even like to me. And I'm such a douchebag actor. I'm like, I'm just playing the integrity of you know. He's a great guy. He I feel like he, he like, yeah. I feel great. I, you know what I mean? Like I feel like I'm. He made know, the right choices according exactly. to him. Like I believe in everything that I'm doing. And like I remember at New York Comic Con, you know, room of thousands. You know, it was like Walking Dead, this big comic book, and. Andrew Lincoln comes up and he goes, hello, I'm Andrew Lincoln and I'm going to be playing Rick Cross. Ah! And then like Sarah Wayne Callis, yeah, I'm going to play. And they went like one by one. And then I came to me and I'm like, hello, everybody. I'm John Bernthal. I'll be playing Shane Walsh. And I was like ready for that. And it was like this resounding like, Boo! and I was, I remember I, I was like, oh, you know, like me? What, like, what? Offended. Yeah, I was like, what is this, man? Like you haven't even seen the show. Like, I, like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, you, and, and it was, uh. I, it was. I never. I had never felt that mm-hmm. before. I mean, you've been like to have a, a thousands of people, <laughs> especially like, when you're not expecting. When it. I, I wasn't. Ex- <laughs> dude, I was like, how could right. you applaud for her and not a not like what the fuck are you basing this off? But you know, man, they they're smart audience and they read the comic books and they hate yeah. they hated that character. So Shane was always the heel. He so. was always the heel, man. And I fought. And but the one thing that I will say that's that's interesting about it that 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 goes along right w- with what you're saying is by the next year, once the show had already come out, you know, and then Shane had actually done some bad. You know, he like killed a he killed the you know Fat Otis and he killed you know he had done some pretty shady shit. Yeah. At that year when they announced it, they all were like, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? Cheering. I was like, yeah, let's hear it, man. They're like, you might be shitty, but you are shitty, you know? And I think we that accepted that's you. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, yeah. you did it all right, yeah, man. Yeah, and I, yeah. and that, like, you know, man, that that uh, that definitely that definitely made me happy. And what about, like, um, you know, obviously, y- y- you know, the, the, the injuries that you yeah, sustained. That's, that's what I'm wondering is how – I mean, it, it's got to be – so hard on your body to just sustain yeah, I, all those shots over the years, over years, over years. Yeah, I, I, you know, amateur wrestling is one of the most injury prone sports, and I got injured a lot doing it. But um, getting into pro wrestling, I didn't realize the wear and tear it put on your body. I, I, I thought it was fake. I thought, you know, all the stuff, you know, you were pulling punches, yep. you weren't really. Uh, doing anything but you know when i got there and i took the bumps you ever been in the ring and take a bump you have to be a supreme athlete right yeah well it's just it hurts it's the worst pain um you ever get uh, you ever get hit from behind going 50 yeah (laughs) it's pretty much what it is wow so you have every every Um, night too every night you're bumping yeah and this is what i tell young wrestlers that they want to be wb superstars someday which is great um Limit your bumps. Like you only have so many in your career, and then that's it. What do you consider a bump? Um, that's when you, uh, if someone slams you and you land on the, what do you call it? It's wood, basically. So it's how do you limit your bumps? Plywood, yeah. How do you uh, limit your bumps? I mean, it's. I mean, um, is it, is it just your choice. When you start training, they usually like when uh, when I did the Dory Funk Dojo, we had to do three hundred a day. You don't need to do three hundred. You need yeah. to do about ten, fifteen. Yeah. 300 is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so we're you're doing going that every in. day. How many times did you, I mean, what injuries did you walk into the W? You had a broken neck. 
I yeah, I came in. I had uh, four knee surgeries, a broken neck. Um, I broke my arm, broke my shoulder. But when I got to WWE, I broke my neck four more times. Four more times, so right. It, one was a chair shot to the head. One was uh, uh, Brock Lesnar. I was on his back, and he ran full speed. And he uh, turned sideways, and we hit the turnbuckle, and my head snapped sideways, and it broke. And uh, Did you know immediately? Yeah, my whole right side. How, I couldn't how, lift my arm. It was just... How do you continue at that point? Ah, uh, you just use the other arm. <laughs> okay, that's all you can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. But um, makes sense. Your adrenaline's pumping. You right. you get through the match. I, I you know I, I saw Triple H once. He tore his quad and real, rolled up his leg, and he finished the match without a, a quad. The whole thing was rolled up. So you, you figure out a way. I mean, but um, those injuries come a lot, and the the problem is you wrestle them three hundred days a year. Yeah. So. You don't have any time off. Yeah. So you and wrestle injured, you wrestle not injured. It doesn't matter. You guys must have a good training staff too, right? Uh, they didn't. They do now, thank God. Back then, we we were lucky to have a trainer there. Yeah. It was, so what would you guys do? Just take care of ourselves. And uh, I just abused my body, and I, I stopped taking care of it. I didn't even stretch anymore. I'd literally go like this, go out and wrestle. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was asking too much for my body for so many years. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and and in your head, you're just saying, "Fuck it, man. This is this is work. Go do, you know." And that's like, and you know, when I was taking painkillers, I just if I was hurt here, I just pop the pill. Pop them in. <laughs> yeah. How quickly does that become out of control? And and when 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 do you realize it? I mean, take me just a bit through that process. It it, it got out of control right away. The first time I tried a painkiller, um, it, it was the greatest feeling in the world. I I, I felt invincible. What was that? Was it an oxy or? Uh, it was uh, extra strength Vicodin. Uh -huh. And uh, that was my drug of choice. Um, and I, you know, once I got that feeling, I didn't ever not want to feel like that again. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have that feeling all the time. Mm -hmm. So when I when the when it would run out, I'd take another one. And when it would run out, I'd take two. Then two ran to four, you build a tolerance. Yep. I was, uh, at one point, I was taking 65 extra strength biking a day. Fuck. And I was I was feeding that addiction, uh, spending a lot of money doing it. But, you know, I, I, I got myself in so much trouble that there was no way I could get myself out. You know, like, uh, at one point, the company wanted me to take time off and get myself uh, clean. And I... I tried, but I just couldn't do it. It mm -hmm. was, you know, I, I needed assistance. Yeah. So eventually I went right. and uh, got it done. I haven't taken a painkiller since, but it's been seven and a half years. But um, it was, it was, uh, I mean, there were, there were a few times where I, uh, you know, I should have, should have been dead. Mm -hmm. I, I overdosed and uh, I was, I was playing with fire. That's, that's why I left the company in 2006. I had to get out. I, uh, you know, the painkiller problem was ridiculous. Uh, the injuries, uh, I wasn't getting any time off. So it was, I just knew I, if I didn't back out then, I was going to, I was going to kill myself. You're in such a great place now, mm -hmm. but would you be able to be in this place that you're in now if you hadn't gone through that? Like, is it? No, no. I think, I think it made me a better person. Uh, you know, you know what I still do now that I think I would have, Probably once I retired from wrestling, I probably would just said, I'm good. Uh, you know, let's retire and live the rest of my life. But going through the painkiller thing and ruining my reputation and, you know, uh, you know, having people not call me anymore, I had to, I had to earn that back. I had to get, I had to work twice as hard to get back to yep. where I am now. And, you know, we're, we're a different breed. You know, we, we, here we are, 40s, 50s, and we're still thinking of the goals we want to mm -hmm. attain. Most people, you know, they're, they're good, yeah. you know. Looking um, to settle down. Yeah, settle down. you got to have a different frame of mind to be the, the I don't want to say the elite that think that way all the time, but that always want to improve themselves. Yeah. And, um I continue to do that, and I think that that my painkiller addiction brought me back to that yep. and said, you know what, your life's not over. That's right. You're 51, and you're just beginning. Fuck so yeah. now it's time to start your new career, yep. and now's the time to show the world what you had then and what you have now. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
you know, the opioid crisis and like given where, you know, Western Pennsylvania, uh, you know, it's Got interesting. Like, yeah. It's just all over the place, right? And I know it's, I mean, look, man, it's 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 hit our family, mm -hmm. you, you know, in a major way. And it's hit, you yeah, know, Yeah, we like got that. a bunch of addicts. You know, but I mean, it's, it's. Um, I guess I'm just interested in why you think that crisis has, has hit, has hit the area that you grew up in. I mean, like being married to Aaron, I mean, I, there was a period of time where I like I really felt like every time she was getting a phone call from home, it was oh, about no, some tragedy, whether it was in the family or somewhere else, or you know somebody that she had grown up with or gone to high school who OD'd and died. Right? You know, I I would definitely say that my family has hit been hit one of the hardest with you know drug addiction, alcoholism. My my father was an alcoholic, um, very functional. But he was he was always drinking all day, all night, all day, all night. My every yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, it, just being from a family like that and seeing all the turmoil and pain, seeing people die, seeing people go to jail, um, you know, seeing your father die at a young age of fifty five, um, it's it, it it carries with you, you know, and. I never thought in a million years I'd ever get trapped in it. Yeah. I look at your life now. I look at your wife. I look at your family, mm -hmm. your career. Like, you, you know, you're just like in this like beautiful mm -hmm. place. Um, I don't know, man. Like, what is it? What does that take? Uh, it, 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 it's a lot of work. Um, you got to have the mindset of um, uh, being able to turn things off and turn things on and a flip of a switch. So my motivation is when when I think about my wife and kids, I I know I'll stay clean. So as long as I have them up here and in here, I'll be fine. Uh, the second I ever think I'm going to lose them, <laughs> I would start worrying. Yeah. So when I went into rehab in 2013, I made it a point to get clean for them, uh, not for myself, because I told you before, I don't exactly love myself that much. Yeah, I got pretty same. low self-esteem. I've been really hard on myself, but I'm learning how to accept myself and love myself. And I think the more I do that, the easier it will get for me. But right now my motivation is not me, it's my wife and kids. Mm -hmm. And that's what's gonna keep me clean. I, I think the problem here, again, is there's so much signaling. There's so much saying, hey, I'm, I'm tough, I'm trying. We know, I mean, look, man, professional fighter, college wrestler, mm. <laughs> Olympic champion, Olympic you know champion, what I mean? world like, champion. You, you know, I play <laughs> tough guys you know, on WWE TV. Champion. We know the guy who sits yeah. there and 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 said talks about how tough they are is masking something. And the <laughs> key right. to yeah, right. you know immediately the guy who's humble and yeah. the guy, you know, you always say is the last guy in the boxing yeah, gym yeah. is the last guy you got to worry about. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen Sean beat the living snot out of people. He's the most <laughs> humble guy in the boxing gym, but I've right. seen him beat people's ass only because they came to the gym being like, I'll fight anybody in here. I'm like, I'll fight you. You know, with the huge shit eating grin, right. like right. any, you right. know, like I, I'd be glad to. Not afraid, that. are you? I mean, hey, look, man, you know. Uh, and you know, you've, you've had your ass beat. Man. Yeah, you yeah. know, anybody that, you know, claims they haven't, you know, uh, they haven't fought enough people. That's right. You're right. You know? You're right about that. And that's, you know, but. You haven't gotten your ass kicked. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you haven't You're fought enough. You haven't yeah. fought enough people yet. But I think yeah. it's true with life too. And I think it's like a beautiful metaphor that is in, and, and, and again, I think that, you know, when you, when you talk about just the, the political climate and the social climate and, you know, everybody's kind of putting all this shit out through social media and politics is all about, Hey, am I on this side or am I on this side? I think, you know, again, it's in, it, it, instead of exhibiting real power and real strength with, I think comes from saying, Hey, I'm human. I'm just like you. I'm worried about shit. Things aren't great for me either. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do the best. I love my kids. I love my family. I'm hoping for the best. I wish that there was more kind of discourse. Like I, that. I wish more people knew that, that, that people of our status feel the same way as them. That's right. And that, you know, uh, we figure out a way to get through it and we continue on and we try to have great lives and happy lives. And there's a lot of people that just don't think they have any hope. And, so is that what it is? I mean, when you, when you look at the, the, the people who are kind of, um, you know, right now, I mean, like when you look at the people, Western Pennsylvania, is it a lack of hope? Is it, what is the biggest problem right now? Well, 
you know, I, well, the whole virus thing didn't help any, any matters. But Pittsburgh is uh, is a lower middle class city mm -hmm. that you know a lot of people are struggling. They're very hard workers, and they they do whatever they can to make a living. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just you know a lot of them are struggling, yeah. and they're going through a lot of stress. It's the way it's the way that they can reduce that stress by taking drugs and. Uh, once once they're in it, they it's hard to get out. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it, I don't think anybody goes in with the intention. Of, hey, I want to be an addict. Right. Let's do this. Right. I think they say, I want to forget tonight. Yep. Just let yep. me forget tonight. Yep. And then that becomes a habit every day. And every day you're having a bad day. You're like, I just want to forget today too. Yep. And I want to, and it, you know, then before you know, you're just you're stuck. Yep. Yeah. What is one story about my father-in-law that you think <laughs> like what is the most like what is one story that i've All never right, heard i'll tell you i think yeah. I, I think George i know there was like one that it was like maybe like time he got like stabbed up and got put in that car or something but oh okay, like what's the okay. most what, what, like his lore all right what is this uh, well the one where he got stabbed he he actually fought five guys and one of them stuck a knife uh one of them mark grabbed him the double leg and got him up in the air and his his arm came down and got him in the uh, intestines. Yeah, that's what his I mean. intestines were popping out. Like he oh, was, he, he was gonna die. He, thank God that there was a. Uh, basically, what happened was uh, my brother-in-law, my sister married him, and the, the, these guys were accusing him of robbing a house. And my brother Mark came and said, "What's going on?" And they said, "We're gonna kill this guy because he's he robbed a house or whatever." And Mark said, "No, you're not." And they said, "What are you gonna do about it?" And they got in a fight. So five of them. There were five of them, which you know I I thought was bullshit, but I talked to my sister and she wouldn't lie to me. Yeah. So she's telling the truth, but he 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 beat up all of them. Yeah. And the last one got a knife in on him, and mm -hmm. um, the intestines were coming out. So uh, someone did the smart thing and rolled him up in a ball, mm -hmm. and then they threw him in the back of a Volkswagen. If he wouldn't have done that, he would have died. Wow. So uh, growing up. I used to hear all these rumors about him fighting, and I find out it was all true. These, these high schools, you know, back then gangs were, you know, less. They didn't kill each other; they yeah. just beat each other up. You yeah. know, back then there was less killings, yeah. and uh, they would travel to my brother's high school and say, "I heard you're Mark Angle, and I heard you're the toughest dude in Pittsburgh, and I want to try you." And they would, and Mark never lost, never yeah. lost. He was, you know, everybody has a family member. You don't have a family member like this. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is different. Is it, yeah, yeah he's, you know, I want to go to the Olympics and I'm a fucking pussy. <laughs> like, it's just, he's in a different level. Yeah. And, and uh, same with my brother, Eric. Eric. Mark and Eric's right under there, but uh, they're two different breeds that I, I, I have fucked with Eric and I've paid the price many times. And that's one thing. If you're going to fight them, this is where you lose regardless. Because I thought, you know, with my brother Mark, at one point we got in an argument. And I was like, fuck that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 30 years old. He's 20 years older than me. I mean, yeah. he's a fucking old man. I'll kill him. Yeah. And I'm thinking, if I do fight him, I'm going to lose an eye. Yeah. I'm going to lose two fingers. <laughs> so is, is it going to matter? Yeah. I'm going to lose anyway, yeah. you know? So Mark's going to do that. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's going to bite your nose off. He's yeah. going to take your ears off. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> right. not, not, honestly, he would have yeah. kicked my ass anyway. But what yeah. I'm saying is even if I could kick his ass, I would yeah. lose. Yeah. yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Same with yeah. Eric. Eric yeah. will bite your ear off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it goes to show why you became a world champion. Don't mess with my brothers. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Right. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you got to remember, man, I, you know, like I met Aaron. She's, she's a nerd. First of all, I'm not earning any money, man. I'm an out of work, <laughs> somewhat <laughs> yeah. employed bouncer. And the one you're 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 like, like Struggling drunk, actor. Struggling actor. I mean, I'm doing plays sometimes yeah. where there's like four people on stage, two right. in the audience. Right. I mean, things are not looking good. Right. I meet this like angel, beautiful you know, I see you trauma. She she's paying, yeah, man. man. Yeah. She's paying for yeah. every meal. You know, and she's like, "Hey, Dad, I, you know what she's I mean." She's got a like, great career. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't believe who I met. Yeah. This freaking actor. Yeah. You know what I mean? This actor like gets in trouble and all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, like what a shit bag. And he, you know, 
And I'll tell you, man, now he's, I mean, it, yeah. you know, I cannot, I cannot imagine having a better you friendship, yourself, with, you, you know, with, yeah. with my father-in-law. Like I yeah. love, I love him. I love all you guys, man. And, he's not and easy to get along with either. He, no, so, man, he's not. Yeah. No, I, I, he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's very you did a good job. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, look, man, I, you know, I love you, man. And I appreciate I you, you doing this and, and, uh, it was an honor to be on. Man. Oh, come on, man. We're going to miss this for the world. Right on, man. And it's cool. You too. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure meeting you, man. You too. Fuck yeah. Glad to see you doing well. Too. Oh, thanks, yeah. man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you dug what you saw and you want to hear more, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Uh, it'd mean a lot to us. I hope you dig these episodes as much as we dig doing them. You guys take care of yourself.